Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical. We are just one month away from the presidential election. Is it time to start panic buying yet? <laughs> well, I don't really believe in panic buying. Hopefully you have your bases covered already. But election years, <laughs> firearms and accessories and ammo always seem to become more scarce during election years. Uh, mainly, I mean, a big part of the reason is that a lot of people are afraid that if the Democrats win, that they're going to come after your guns, which the Kamala Harris, Tim Walz, uh campaign has literally said exactly that. They do want to put an assault weapons ban in place. They've said that many times. But of course, they're not coming after their, your guns because they're gun owners, right? But so that usually makes the cost of things like AR-15s and especially ammo go up. Luckily, I haven't really seen these prices come up yet. And for us being this close to the election, it actually surprises me and it's a, it's a good sign. It means that hopefully people are already prepared and are not panic buying at the last minute. But in this video, I do want to put forth five things that it is probably smart to get before the election because you never know what might happen, whether whether it might be hard to find things, the prices of things go up, or whether we have absolute chaos after the election, depending, I mean, honestly, on <laughs> if either side wins, there could be some chaos, and you do want to be prepared for that. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you're subscribed, and let's begin. So the first thing is a solid rifle and pistol. We're going <laughs> to include both of them in our first thing that you should make sure that you have before the election. Now, hopefully these two things you already have taken care of, but if you don't, it is still a good time to buy. Prices haven't gone through the roof or anything. Make sure that you have a rifle that you totally trust and that you have shot and you know is reliable just in case things pop off the day after the election and you need to defend your life or your property. Hopefully we never have to use our firearms for that, but that is part of the reason that we have them. Make sure that you have a rifle that runs reliably. I am using my Mark 18 in this example. This thing runs great. I've never had a malfunction with it yet. I put it together myself and I think that it would be a great, you know, go to war gun if I needed it to be. I think this 14 and a half inch would also be great. That's more of a of a general purpose rifle where this is more of a CQB style. Although if you're gonna run suppressed, which I like to do, a shorter barrel makes your overall length not so long once you put the suppressor on. Now my other example here is my Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 pistol. This is an extremely reliable gun up there in reliability with Glock, but I like the features and the ergonomics a little bit better personally. I think that the grip texture on the M&P just is really good. The thing doesn't move in my hands. I've got mine cut for an optic. It's direct mount for the Holosun EPS, which is an enclosed emitter optic. Again, eliminating any variable of, you know, having something that could go wrong. Now, I've not really ever had a problem with any of my open emitter optics, but just one more thing, nothing can block that emitter. Make sure you have a good light and a good optic on both your rifle and your pistol and a sling on your rifle and a holster for your pistol. And make sure that you can run these things confidently, that you have some practice with them. And we're gonna get into that in a minute. But I did just take a class last weekend with this pistol. It didn't have a single malfunction. We went through hundreds of rounds of ammo and I shot it very well. The pistol performed perfectly. And so make sure that the stuff that you have, at least a rifle and a pistol, are reliable and that you feel confident with them. This video is sponsored by Aura. You will never be able to afford a Staccato XC if you're getting hit with scammers all the time and Aura takes care of that for you. In fact, they take care of all of your online security all in one place. You get a VPN, you get home title monitoring, parental controls, but the big one is you get data broker removal. Now, what does that mean? 
or it goes online. You take just a couple minutes to set it all up and then they scour the dark web, the regular internet, everything out there, and they find anywhere where your data has been leaked. And they submit opt-out requests on your behalf, which removes you from any of those lists. And what that does is it removes you from lists that are accessed by scammers and by spammers, and more than that as well. But I've been using it for about seven months now. And you know what? I used to get calls all the time, people trying to scam me through my debit card, through my bank account, and it caused me a lot of problems at one point. I don't get those anymore, and I haven't gotten those calls in seven months. I also don't get spam calls anymore. I don't get spam emails anymore. All of that stuff has been gone from my life, and <laughs> it's really nice just to know that my information isn't out there anymore, and that I don't have to worry about getting scammed anymore, and I'm not receiving spam anymore. Those are the biggest things that Aura has done for me, which honestly has really improved my life and just kind of puts me at ease. And they can do the same for you. If you use my link down below, aura.com slash sawtooth tactical, you get two weeks free trial. That's 14 days to try it out and see if you like it. If you do want to stick with it, it's only $12 a month after that. And you get all of those things that I talked about earlier and more. I think that it is absolutely worth it. I appreciate them for sponsoring the channel. Now back to your regular scheduled program. So the next thing, and this might be obvious to many of you, but that is going to be ammo. Ammo is something that, you know, around the last election and actually for a couple of years after it, uh, ammo became pretty scarce and it became very expensive because of that. And if ammo is more expensive, then you're less likely to shoot as much and shooting is a perishable skill. It's something that you have to do. You have to go out and you have to practice. And in order to be able to do that, you have to have enough ammo to be able to practice, but also still have your SHTF ammo, the just in case ammo, in case you ever have to actually use it. And so this is a good time to stock up on ammo. And this is why I say not to panic buy, Hopefully you're already stocked up to an extent at this point, but I find my own self, you know, I spend, I try to stock up on a little bit of ammo every single week. I go into my local gun store, buy a couple of boxes of 5.56. This thing right here is full of 55 grain, 223, 5.56. This is my like training ammo. I also have magazines loaded up with defensive, more expensive ammo, hollow points, um, and then this, this is 124 grain, nine millimeter. Make sure that you have, you know, the calibers that you run the most well stocked. And that can be a difficult thing to do if you shoot and train regularly. Like I go out shooting every weekend. Last weekend, I went through 400 rounds. So now I need to restock at least that much. And what I try to do is when I shoot, I try to buy more ammo than what I shot so that my ammo stockpile is constantly increasing instead of decreasing. But after a weekend of shooting 400 rounds, well, now I got to buy more ammo. I got 300 rounds of 124 grain coming in the mail. I just bought another 100 rounds of 115 grain the other day. I'll probably buy another 100 or 200 rounds of the 115s on Friday. And a couple more boxes of 55 grain, 223. Um, you know, and I also have AK ammo. I've got um, 7.62 by 39, 300 blackout, both subs and supers. Um, all of these things, you got to make sure that you have enough of but specifically i try to really stock nine millimeter five five six because those are my the ones that i think that i will have to rely on if i do have to rely on them again it would be probably the m and p and one of these five five six chambered ars so make sure you're stocked up before ammo prices skyrocket hopefully they don't skyrocket but just in case make sure you're ready for it the third thing that I think you should definitely make sure that you have enough of 
before the election is going to be magazines. Magazines are really important. Your firearms cannot run without them, at least not your semi-automatic firearms, which are the ones that we're talking about in this video, because modern semi-automatic firearms are what you're going to want in case, you know, in case shit hits the fan. So magazines are extremely important. You need enough magazines and magazines are a wear item. They do wear out and need to be replaced. And magazines are something that, of course, they want to ban high capacity magazines. Well, these are what are called standard capacity magazines. These are Gen 3 Magpul P mags. Dura mags are great as well. Metal magazines, as long as you have the anti-tilt followers, um, then they're just pretty much, in my experience, just as reliable as the P mags. But I do honestly think that there's nothing better than Magpul P mags. I really like the window ones specifically. Um, you can kind of see your round count. Not that I ever really use them for that. I just think they look cool. But they are the utmost in reliability as far as magazines go. And that is something that they want to take away. They do want to institute a high capacity magazine ban as well as an assault weapons ban which is what we're gonna get into in the next thing here in a minute. But make sure you have enough magazines and load them up. Empty magazines don't do you any good. So I've got a bunch of magazines loaded up, ready to go with defensive ammo. And then of course, I've got a bunch of empty ones. I go to the range like every weekend. So I, I shoot, I refill them, but load those magazines up, make sure you have plenty of ammo and plenty of magazines in case, you know, and. I mean, how soon are they really going to be able to put a magazine ban in place? Maybe not ever nationally, but definitely not anytime soon. But at the same time, it's something that you need. You got to be able to feed your guns. An assault weapons ban is something that the Harris Waltz administration has talked about at length. They do want to reinstitute that. So I think that... The fourth thing that is probably important to get is lower receivers, AR-15 lower receivers specifically. And the reason why is this, that is the serialized portion. That is what is legally considered the firearm. And so if they put a ban on assault weapons, it might become harder to find stripped lowers. But if you already have some, I mean, you can just sit them in the back of your safe for now. It probably will be easier to find components, things like triggers, handguards, barrels, optics, stocks, buffer tubes, whatever else it takes to put an AR together. Those are not like restricted serialized items. So if you already have the lowers, well, then you can build out rifles as you see fit. And all those other parts, you can literally order on the internet and have them shipped to your door. You don't have to do a background check. You don't have to go through any of that stuff. You only have to do the background check and fill out the 4473 for the lower receiver. And so if you don't have money for a bunch of rifles right now, I totally get that. Lower receivers are not that expensive. Now, of course, you can get AMB lowers like the ADM here. That's like 400 bucks almost or even the Griffin Armament that is closer to 200. Great deal, by the way, if you want an ambi lower. Or you can get, you know, stripped, just regular mil-spec forged ambi lowers for a lot less than that. You can get a Palmetto State Armory ambi lower for like 40 or 50 bucks. I think cheaper than that sometimes. Anderson lower is very cheap. Now, I would recommend going a little bit higher quality, maybe Geisley lowers. They're not very expensive either, and they're, you know, standard mil spec lowers but they're going to be you know in spec they're going to have all the holes drilled right so your trigger pins your hammer pin don't walk everything goes together correctly and i'm not saying that anderson or psa won't this is a psa and it's ran for thousands of rounds just fine i'm just saying you can spend a little bit more money and make sure that you have something that's going to be totally reliable but again i mean you can get 10 psa lowers for the price of one ADM lower <laughs> and, you know, build out 10 rifles over time, even if they ban the sale of assault weapons. Sorry, 
that went on the assault weapons with the band. Um, so yeah, stripped lowers, and you kind of future-proof yourself against a band like that, and hopefully we're still able to get parts and components and accessories to finish rifles off. And the fifth and last thing that I want to talk about is training. And I know people say this in YouTube videos a lot, but I just recently did a defensive pistol class last weekend. That's why I'm wearing this hat because it was at Armed Citizens of Idaho. And I feel like the class was very beneficial. Now I go shooting every weekend, 52 weeks out of the year. But am I really training when I go out? A lot of the time I'm filming for YouTube videos and I'm mag dumping at steel targets, whether with a pistol or a rifle or whatever. But I'm not really using every round to actually train and get better. And it was good to go out there with an instructor, run actual drills on paper, see where I was making mistakes, you know, where my shots were actually going, compete against myself as far as time goes with the shot timer. All of that stuff is really important. And I feel like my skills did improve just in that one day, but also will continue to improve because I will use those drills and the things that I learned in the class, you know, as I go shooting this weekend, next weekend, to continue to improve. But it also made me feel really good about the skills that I already have. I ran uh, the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 full size in the class. And I would say that I did pretty dang well with it. This gun was totally reliable through um, a few hundred rounds. Ran great. It was accurate. I found out that my zero and my red dot wasn't right on. And so I adjusted it in the class and now I'm more confident in my zero on my optic. Because a lot of the time when I'm shooting at steel, you know, if I hear the steel, to me it's a hit. If I don't, it's a miss. But I found out that my zero was a little bit off. So I got that fixed now. And that only came from actually shooting cardboard IPSC targets. And so I do think that training is very important. And I think that everyone should take at least a class or two or more, um, whatever you can afford as far as time and money goes, because it does, you know, there's a time commitment there, but also a monetary expense. You know, the class costs a few hundred bucks and then you go through a few hundred rounds of ammo. So that all does add up. But I think that the most important thing maybe, besides owning all these firearms, is being able to use them well. Being proficient with them and feeling confident in your abilities with them so that if you do, God forbid, ever have to use them, well, that you can use them effectively and that you know that you can. I think that that is probably the most important thing. And so, Hopefully we'll be doing a video with these guys at some point in the future. I actually just talked to them, talked to uh, the instructor today about doing just that. But I do think that what they do is very valuable. And um, there are a lot of good instructors out there. I'm sure you could find one in your area. I didn't really know who was in my area that did it, but a friend of mine that's in the guns uh, got us set up for this class last weekend. And I think that it was very valuable. This video was not meant to make you go out and panic buy any of these things. Hopefully everything that I mentioned in this video is stuff that you already have. And if you're watching this channel, then you're probably the type of person that is already prepared. And when I say prepared, I mean prepared for, I mean, anything can happen, honestly. You want to be prepared for possible the possibility of not being able to find ammo or of an assault weapons ban. Just the possibility of not being able to get the stuff that you want and have a right to have. But you should also be prepared for the possibility of chaos in our country after this election. This is an election where both sides feel very strongly and, you know, I hate to say the word civil war or anything like that, and I hope that nothing like that ever happens again. Um, but our country is more divided than ever. And I can see the possibility of something really crazy happening no matter which side wins in this election. And so you want to be prepared for that just in case. And there are other things, honorable mentions, you know, helmet, nods, plate carrier, <laughs> stuff like that that I don't even have. 
to be honest. I've got a bunch of guns, but I don't have all that other stuff. Although, stay tuned. We will have night vision on the way on this channel. Uh, I'm working with a company right now, and hopefully that happens sooner rather than later. So I hope you guys are excited for that because I'm very excited for that. Now let me know down in the comments if you think that I forgot something. I was trying to leave the video to just five things. And so I thought of the five most important things to me to make sure you have before this election. You know, um, Kamala Harris hasn't said anything about banning night vision, you know, but banning assault weapons, meaning semi-automatic rifles, she has. And so there is a reason why I put the five things that I did but if you think that there are other things that are just as important or more important to get before the election, put those in the comments for the rest of the viewers. If you have any questions for me, feel free to ask. I do try to answer as many comments as I possibly can. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. Make sure you subscribe to Sawtooth Tactical. And from Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.